Bharat exhibition. Today, we are very pleased to be celebrating World Wi-Fi Day, a day when experts from around the world can gather and share their experiences for the betterment of the growing and developing ecosystem. Before we proceed to the formal event, let me also announce that in our drive to promote accessibility in the digital communications world, we at Broadband India Forum had initially made our website completely accessible, benefiting persons with disabilities. We then introduced the next step forward with sign language interpreters for all our webinars and events. And I suspect we are among the very few around the globe that provide this facility. It therefore gives me great pleasure to welcome today Dr. Renoka Rameshan, the president of the Association of the Sign Language Interpreters of India and her colleague, Mr. Saurabh Roy Chowdhury, to do the interpretation for this important event. Dr. Renuka Rameshan holds a PhD in social work and is a senior sign language interpreter trainer with an experience of 20 years in the field. Currently, she is also an executive member of the Indian Sign Language Research and Training Center. Accompanying her is Mr. Saurabh Roy Chowdhury, who is a member of the Association of Sign Language Interpreters as well, and a freelance sign language interpreter. He has done his master's in extension and development studies and is proficient in English, Hindi, Bangla, Indian Sign Language, and American Sign Language. And now to a few housekeeping announcements. There is a chat box and a Q&A box on the bottom of the screen in case any questions need answered. And a raise your hand button right next to it to indicate that you wish to have the floor. The moderator will then determine the opportunity to invite you to speak. Keeping your camera on is a matter of personal choice and convenience, except when speaking. However, in the event of a loss of bandwidth, my experience has been that switching off the camera helps. This event is being recorded, as you have been advised, and a link will be shared with all participants to revisit and share should you wish to. There is also the facility of closed captions at the bottom that may be enabled from the link in the lower bar. With these few announcements out of the way, it is a pleasure for me to hand over the, to the moderator for the event, Mr. Manohar Raja. Mr. K. Manohar Raja is chairman of BIF's Wi-Fi committee and executive director at Railtel. He joined the Indian Railway Service of Signal Engineers in 1992 and has led several innovative initiatives in Railtel, including the Station Wi-Fi project, one of the best digital inclusion platforms in the world, and Railwire, the Railway 139 service, which he conceptualized and designed, also got a mention in the top 10 ideas which changed the railway. I shall now hand over to Manoharji to take the proceedings forward. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Agarji. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And a very warm welcome to everyone at the Digital Dialogues organized by Broadband India Forum to celebrate the World Wi-Fi Day in advance today. It is my honor and privilege to welcome eminent dignitaries who have joined us today for this session. Dr. P.D. Vagela, Chairman PRAI, Ms. Dorothy Stanley, Chair of the Wi-Fi Group, IEEE, Mr. J.R. Wilson, Chairman, Wireless Broadband Alliance, Professor Abhay Karandikar, Director, IIT Kanpur, Dr. Rajkumar Upadhyay, Executive Director, CDOT, my colleagues from the industry, and the audience. I sincerely wish all your family and friends are safe in these challenging times. We have gathered here today in this digital dialogue to celebrate and reiterate the importance of Wi-Fi in today's challenging times. It is a fact that Wi-Fi has shaped the way we work, the way we play, the way we study, 
and the way they interact with each other. And in the pandemic, this uh, we have uh, raised the status to a lifeline to the outside world. We use Wi-Fi so frequently that many of us don't even give it a second thought anymore. And I think it's a sign of maturity of the technology. So that when technology disappears, it, uh, it, it shows the maturity of the technology. For instance, think of electricity. In a recent study, it was found that a whopping 71% of mobile traffic on smartphones happens over Wi-Fi, which speaks volumes of the simplicity and user acceptance of Wi-Fi technology, especially in an age where unlimited mobile data uh, uh, over mature 4G networks are the norm. Looking into the future, it is estimated there would be over 50 billion connected Wi-Fi devices worldwide. Wi-Fi is a fine example, I would say, of a, a living standard. The standard evolves uh, organically over several device generations, providing backward compatibility and yet keeping up with the disruptive data revolution in the last three decades. Even now, we see the agility of the standard as it converges with the 5G core on the one, one side, with connected cars on the other, with, with motion sensing on a, yet another side, and with industrial uh, deployment in, a, in another side and so on. Here in India, Wi-Fi has got a big boost in the form of PM Vani. The proliferation of community Wi-Fi or public Wi-Fi hotspots could quench the thirst for more and more data, especially among our youth and newer users of the internet. With the consolidation of the telecom industry, uh, uh, and I, I reckon that the mobile data prices have bottomed out. This may not necessarily be a good thing as we have quite a good distance to cover in terms of digital inclusion. In this context, I've, I believe that PM Vani Wi-Fi entrepreneurship model democratizes data business and has great potential. Wi-Fi has a great, this great grassroots empowerment appeal and I've witnessed this firsthand in our station Wi-Fi project where we were overwhelmed by heartwarming stories from remote corners of the country where people were stating how they're benefiting from the station Wi-Fi project. In my opinion, while Wi-Fi technology and standards have rapidly scaled vertically as well as horizontally, uh, I think a sustainable business model for public Wi-Fi hotspot is still elusive. I'm sure Wi-Fi having such a universal appeal as well as standards to support interoperability, just a matter of time before this becomes a reality. We have a galaxy of esteemed speakers today to give us insights and enlighten us with their different perspectives. So without much further ado, I would like to invite Mr. T.V. Ramchandran, the president of the Broadband India Forum to share his views. An esteemed industry veteran, TV has been part of the mobile telephone industry in India since its very inception and was the first CEO of Sterling Cellular at Delhi. He established and led COIAI for 12 years during the most interesting of times in telecom in India. He's also a honorary fellow of IET, London, and global advisory member of the IET Future Tech Panel. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Manohar ji. Thank you very much for your kind words. Uh, respected chief guest, Dr. P. D. Vagela, chairman TRAI, special guest of honor, Dr. R. K. Upadhyay, executive director of CDOT, Ms. Dorothy Stanley, chair of the IEEE 802.11 working group, Mr. J. R. Wilson, chair, Wireless Broadband Alliance and vice president at and Professor Abhay Karandikar, director IIT Kanpur, former member TRAI and former chairman TSDSI, Mr. Manohar Raja, chair, BIF Wi-Fi committee, and ED Railtel, Sri Sanjay Padabudri, co-chair of BIF Wi-Fi committee and director of software at Intel, Dr. Renuka, Mr. Saurav, Mr. Rajat Mukherjee, my colleague, esteemed members in, of the media, distinguished attendees, ladies and gentlemen. On the occasion, on this day, the occasion of the World Wi-Fi Day 2021, I would first of all like to express my most hearty congratulations to all of you, the entire wireless broadband fraternity on the global growth of Wi-Fi technology and the tremendous flow of benefits therefrom. As per Cisco report in 2020, there were 432.5 million public Wi-Fi hotspots all over the world. And almost 60% of the entire data traffic globally 
and even more in some pockets were carried over Wi-Fi networks. And this, as per their estimates, is likely to rise sharply further now. It is forecast that there will be a humongous 628 million hotspots, public Wi-Fi hotspots in the globe by 2023, hardly two years from now. As against the above, uh, we note that here in India, we, though we are blessed with one sixth of the world's population and also blessed with a huge geography of a large subcontinent, we are not a country, we are a subcontinent, it, it has nevertheless got half a million or less public Wi-Fi hotspots. That is less than half a percent, not even 1%, less than half a percent of the global norms. And this is as per data authenticated by various sources, including the TRAI, TRAI Statista, IPAS, and uh, Cisco. As against this, the takeaway from this is very loud and clear for all of us. We have an enormous opportunity ahead of us. We are very bullish about this. We can do a lot to match the developed and developing economies in terms of the number of hotspots we deliver to our masses in terms of hotspots per pop or hotspots per square kilometer. These public Wi-Fi networks will have a very critical role to play as India moves towards 5G, Internet of Things, accelerated adoption of emerging technologies like big data, AI, and robotics to meet India's digital infrastructure needs. Naysayers might well ask, why Wi-Fi hotspots when we have such low mobile tariffs? And Mr. Raja also referred to it. Such mobile tariffs, low mobile tariffs cannot sustain. They are not viable. And therefore, they are continually rising and have to rise further if we are to go forward in the rollout of networks. And our mobile broadband speeds are also barely one third of the global norms. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm fond of quoting often the world's highest telecommunications authority, which as you all know is ITU based in Geneva, which is an, which is an arm of the UN. Their beautiful holistic definition of digital infrastructure, which is as recent as 2019, includes not only the very important elements of internet, fixed and mobile networks, but also Wi-Fi, also SATCOM, also software apps, etc., as required in digital infrastructure. We have to remember that. We need to have a holistic approach towards that. And in India, we need to go a long way on Wi-Fi. 4G and 5G are, of course, going to be the major pillars of our digital infrastructure. But to support these technologies through enough download and upload capacity, availability of ubiquitous large number of public Wi-Fi hotspots as found by TRAI in a liberalized manner will be absolutely essential. Rightly, therefore, NDCP has set a goal of 10 million public Wi-Fi hotspots in India by 2022. And we have to make that happen if the vision of Indian digitalization is to be realized and if 5G is going to make a successful entry into India. Uh, with these few words, I will uh, once again wish you all a very happy Wi-Fi day uh, and all the very best in our Wi-Fi mission. Thank you for a patient hearing. Jai Hind. Back to you, Manohar. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, very informative uh, as usual. Thank you very much. It is my honor and privilege to now invite our special guest of honor, Professor Abhay Karandikar, to share his views. Professor Abhay Karandikar is the director of IIT Kanpur and a former chairman of TSDSI. He is a part-time member of TRAI and a renowned academician. He was also a member of the high-level forum on 5G and chaired the 5G Spectrum Policy Task Force. Awarded with IEEE SA Standards Medallion in December 2016, he has several patents to his name and contributions to IEEE and 3GP standards. Thank you for being with us sir, today. Over to you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much uh, for inviting me. Uh, let me just uh, share my slides. Uh, yes. So uh, I will just share a few thoughts uh, on Wi-Fi 6 and uh, what is the emerging 
uh, communication uh, landscape uh, uh, that is there in in India. Uh, T. B. Ramachandran spoke about it, uh, and I will just uh, take it forward. Uh, in terms of uh, what is the importance of Wi-Fi uh, in the context of 5G? In fact, uh, Wi-Fi has a greater role to play uh, when we roll out uh, the 5G cellular mobile uh, communication systems. And in Indian context, uh, I will also briefly touch about uh, what is the role of Wi-Fi in the rural broadband connectivity, uh, particularly the government of India's uh, ambitious project on Bharat Net and uh, you know, the CSC uh, Wi-Fi Chopal. Uh, and I will also briefly talk about the IEEE P1 standard uh, that we have been driving uh, for the last uh, couple of years. So as uh, Mr. T.V. Ramachandran mentioned uh, that national digital communication policy uh, 2018 had laid out the vision of uh, you know, Wi-Fi to be a key enabler for the broadband uh, proliferations. You know, it said that we want 5 million Wi-Fi hotspots by 2020 and 10 million Wi-Fi hotspots by 2022. And at the same time, there was a TRAI recommendations on the public Wi-Fi networks. Uh, to promote the open public Wi-Fi access, make use of the BharatNet infrastructure and enable a widespread broadband proliferation. And in this context, as all of you know, that PM Wani project is really taking forward the vision of the TRAI's public Wi-Fi uh, networks. Uh, I will just briefly mention here about uh, the importance of Wi-Fi 6. And uh, before we go to Wi-Fi 6, here are certain key technical attributes of Wi-Fi 6. Uh, it has a significant data rate of 9.6 Gbps uh, per second, which is very much needed uh, for the fixed access broadband proliferation. It works in both 2.4, 5 gigahertz. It's a dual band. We have an OFDMA support large channel bandwidth, we can go up to 160 megahertz, uh, MU MIMO support, and also, you know, uh, very good technical features in terms of, you know, uplink resource uh, scheduling, um, in terms of improved contention handling, and all these things, technical attributes, really uh, make it, uh, you know, it, an enabling technology uh, for the broadband uh, proliferations. If you look at now why, where Wi-Fi uh, in general and Wi-Fi 6 in particular uh, can have a role to play in the context of our 5G deployment. Uh, in terms of 5G, there are certain key trends that we are going to witness. First of all, the massive IoT is going to be a big uh, 5G use case. And this will get uh, you know, fueled by large cities, increased automation, including you know, the factory automation. And most of these IoT devices will use the wireless connectivity, maybe Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, and of course, uh, 5G in nature. But one of the important characteristics of these IoT devices are they are primarily stationary. Mobility is not so important. And while we need mobile networks for the flexibility and the ease of use, as we know that large percentage of mobile users are stationary. In fact, cellular communications is currently the primary communication device in the Indian context. It is not just for the mobility. We need it as the primary access mechanism. When it was 2G or 3G, it was used for voice. And now with 4G and 5G, it will be used as the primary broadband access mechanism. And whether it is in terms of enhanced mobile broadband use case of 5G, or whether it is in terms of the IoT, the fixed use case, the stationary use case remains a primary and significant important use case of the 5G. And therefore, since it is the primary broadband access mechanism, it is necessary to reduce the cost and the resource uh, consumption. And in this context, we feel that Wi-Fi 6 really supplements 
and complements the deployment of the cellular mobile communications. While the 5G cellular mobile communications can provide as an umbrella coverage for the mobility, the Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi 6 hotspots can serve as an important access technology, particularly in the context of stationary and low mobility users where the public Wi-Fi can supplement you know, the EMBB use cases, whether they are hotspots or work in cloud or whether they are online educations or conference like this that we are doing, the virtual reality or the social networking, or whether the support for the IoT use cases. Uh, we believe that the Wi-Fi 6 really provides an important complementary deployment use case that can coexist and in fact will be needed to supplement the 5G cellular mobile communication, which will be providing as an umbrella coverage. The key issue here is of course, the authentication and security. Thankfully, the 3GPP 5G system architecture uh, with its enhanced 5G core has come out with a very good authentication and secure communications uh, for the Wi-Fi. Uh, we know that currently in the networking space, there is an increased network densification in India when we have deployed the 5G or the Wi-Fi hotspot, all, you know, uh, are get deployed simultaneously. You will have 4G LT base stations, we'll have 5G base stations, we'll have Wi-Fi hotspots, we will have millimeter wave 5G. So this really leads to a multi-radio access technology and a unified 5G core provides a common interface towards the core for the access networks, whether you know it is an LTE or whether it is Wi-Fi 6 and uh, you know whether it is a 5G NR. And in this context, when the 5G core will get deployed, we believe that through the interfaces of N3IWF, which has been now uh, you know, uh, standardized in 3GPP, it will provide an important use case for the deployment of the Wi-Fi 6 public hotspots along with the 5G base stations uh, you know, uh, to improve uh, the experience of the broadband communications. So this is one part. The second part I wanted to touch about the rural broadband connectivity. In India, we have been always rethinking uh, the 5G requirements uh, for the rural areas. Particularly in the Indian rural context, we need low cost solutions. And these low costs can be achieved by two, two ways. One is that you reduce the cost of the backhaul. So you don't go for all the way, you know, the fiber connectivity to each and every home or each and every village. but make a mix of the fiber connectivity and the wireless backhaul. And in this context, you know, BharatNet provides a very useful model where the government of India wants to take the fiber up to the gram panchayats, but then the villages which are located in and around, their connectivity can be provided by the wireless backhaul. Second aspect is a lower spectrum cost. And I think unlicensed spectrum of the Wi-Fi can provide a huge opportunity for the proliferation of the broadband. In an Indian rural context, we of course need only a low mobility support. Mobility is required, the stationary and the low mobility, but not a very high speed mobility. There are also small number of vehicles also in the rural area. And more importantly, we need an energy efficient solution. You know, most of the time the technology gets focused in terms of energy efficiency on the energy efficiency of the cell phones. All the time, you know, there is a move towards increasing the battery life of a cell phone. But in India, we also need to think about the energy efficiency of the base stations because, you know, we don't have the 24 by 7 electricity supply, which is taken for granted in most of the developed world. And that is why we really need an energy efficient solution for the access networks and for the base stations and that. And finally, of course, we need the large coverage area support. And in this context, therefore, I see that the combination of providing the broadband proliferation in the rural areas at a lower cost and the stationary access along with energy efficiency can be done with a combination of 4G, 5G and the Wi-Fi hotspots. So this is the architecture that we were envisaging in the P2061 where 
uh, you know, uh, we can have the large coverage area cells to provide ubiquitous connectivity, and that can be provided as shown here by uh, mobile base stations. But small cells, and which are like Wi-Fi hotspots, can act as high-speed access point. And wireless middle mile can be used to backhaul the data, which has been shown here. Uh, and here we believe that Wi-Fi 6 can support both the backhaul as well as the hotspots. It has the capability uh, to sort of uh, do that. And this nicely complements with the BharatNet's Wi-Fi service delivery model. As I just mentioned that uh, the BharatNet envisages taking the optical fiber to the Gram Panchayats. Uh, you know, uh, there are about uh, 250,000 Gram Panchayats and about 600,000 villages uh, in the country. So once the fiber, uh, we know that almost uh, up to 150,000 Gram Panchayats, we have reached the fiber. But then, you know, we need to provide the connectivity that Wi-Fi hotspots for service delivery uh, uh, with, uh, you know, the technologies such as Wi-Fi 6 as point-to-point -point Wi-Fi links and uh, as the hotspots can really help proliferate uh, the broadband uh, in, the, uh, in the villages. Uh, I'm also a part of uh, CSC Wi-Fi Chopal services, uh, which is actually uh, providing the Wi-Fi connectivity using the BharatNet service delivery model. Uh, CSC is an organization to deliver citizen services as uh, given by the government of India and state governments. And convergence of this BharatNet and CSC Wi-Fi delivery has a significant scope uh, in terms of uh, providing uh, you know, the digital e-government services to each and every citizen uh, of the country. Uh, the convergence would help in effective maintenance and utilization of Bharat Nets and also strengthen uh, the common service centers. And it can support the government of India's digital India initiatives and empower our rural community. community. So uh, that's all I thought, you know, I had to share. I, had a, uh, I know that the program is very tightly packed uh, and I had about uh, 10, 12 minutes uh, to talk about this. Uh, I believe that uh, Wi-Fi uh, being the primary broadband access mechanism uh, for uh, almost, uh, you know, uh, majority of our uh, the, uh, we believe uh, that a and the Wi-Fi access technologies can really help proliferate uh, the broadband uh, to all parts of India. And uh, as I mentioned here that all Wi-Fi access technologies have a role to play and particularly the Wi-Fi 6 has an important role uh, to play. And we should really strive towards uh, making sure uh, that uh, we have the deployment uh, of uh, this technology along with the upcoming, uh, you know, 5G deployment in the country because the stationary uh, use case continues to be an important use case uh, uh, for us. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for this illuminating talk. I, I, I definitely think that the uh, Wi-Fi 6 has a big role to play in, in the next phase of BharatNet rollout. I hope uh, uh, this is factored in in our uh, uh, PPP model, which is getting evolved. I would now like to invite Ms. Dorothy Stanley, also a special guest of honor to address us. Ms. Dorothy Stanley, the chair of Wi-Fi Working Group, IEEE. Her work in standards development and industry interoperability programs continue to enable the Wi-Fi industry to innovate and provide disruptive solutions. She has led and contributed to numerous Wi-Fi Alliance task groups and received outstanding contribution awards from the Wi-Fi Alliance. Ms. Stanley, the floor is yours. Thank you very much and good day to the audience. And I want to thank you for the invitation to present today. Okay, let me just confirm that you're seeing the presentation in full screen mode. Yes, it's all okay. right. I'm getting a thumbs up from 
uh, to the Ramachand and excellence. Okay, so the talk that I'm giving today in the 10 minutes, which I appreciate uh, being allocated, is we'll cover three topics and in essence is a 2021 update on the status of the 802.11 standards development. So as witnessed by the talk by Professor Karandakar, Wi-Fi standard, Wi-Fi networks, 802.11 standards are the foundation and a key component of the information and communication technology infrastructure that's being deployed globally and particularly in India. So we'll talk about four recently completed standards of 802.11 standards, I'll highlight those. I'll highlight one new application where the standard has been developed for quite some time, but uh, products have not yet been on the market just to get that uh, out there. And then talk about the new 802.11 amendments coming. The remarks I'm giving are my own. They're not a, an official position of the IEEE. Okay. So the new radio technologies under development are highlighted here in green. Uh, you see the first is the 2020 revision project. So every four years, roughly, we roll up all of the completed amendments into a single comprehensive standard. And the, the prior version was 2016. So this 2020 version incorporates all of the published amendments and a number of technical corrections. Importantly, I'm highlighting again on the prior remarks, 11AX. So this is Wi-Fi 6. The 2021 version was recently published in May. So this standard, while it has been in the market since 2018, uh, the final specification, which supports both 2.4 operation, 5 gigahertz operation, and 6 gigahertz operation is now officially ratified and published. 802.11 AY 2021, likewise, was approved by the IEEE Standards Board in March and is in the process of publication now, we anticipated in July, addresses improved operation and bandwidth in 60 gigahertz. So again, another band where Wi-Fi technology can provide cost-effective features and capabilities. Then 11BA 2021, also approved in March and in the process of publication, focuses on low power and IoT applications. And interestingly that the comment was, you know, there's so much focus on the station power consumption. And indeed, uh, you know, we're guilty here. This is focused uh, on the station power consumption and lowering the station uh, and improving the battery life. So I take uh, as a point of improvement to look at the access point power consumption as mentioned earlier. So I'll show one slide on 11AX, one on 11AY, one on 11BA, and then highlight another uh, component that is essential in the rollout of Wi-Fi networks. So Wi-Fi 6, Wi-Fi 6E, focused on four main areas of improvement. The first is spectral efficiency and area throughput. The second is high density applications. The third is power saving again, and then outdoor and longer range. So when we look at applications such as backhaul or a point to point links, it's important for this longer range uh, support. So the standard does support that. Okay, one more slide on 11AX. Uh, this is important when we're talking about also the performance of 11AX. This slide summarizes the, uh, the metrics that are included in the 5G IMT 2020 analysis. And I want to highlight that uh, work was done, simulation and analysis work, that showed that the performance of the IEEE 811AX, MAC and PHI, meet or exceed the MAC and PHI requirements for the 5G defined indoor hotspot and dense urban use cases. This is a strong testament to the technical capabilities of the technology and the ability of the technology to provide next generation services. Uh, the work that was done here was primarily done by 
uh, two engineers, outstanding engineers in India based in Bangalore, Indu Verma and um, Shubhadeep Adhikari. I'd like to call them out for their outstanding work uh, on that project. 11AY, 60 gigahertz operation. Again, a very broad a set of possible use cases. Uh, the goal again, to increase both throughput and range for a number of often high value applications. In particular, the fixed wireless access use case, which has seen uh, some exploratory and the prototype deployment um, uh, globally in the Facebook Paragraph project. And the example is shown here, there's some links provided. And I think to the point of needing low cost deployments to provide internet access in the rural areas in particular, a 60 gigahertz in this case is an excellent alternative. This is a quote from this paper. Uh, an alternative to license frequencies for smaller providers can be used to deliver 5G performance with a minimal cost, a much lower cost. And so this is, it, it's really important for meeting the needs of people in an affordable manner because um, to provide the service has tremendous value. Okay. And 11BA, again, low power. The key technical innovation here is the introduction of a low power wake up radio that can detect and be notified when there's traffic for a station. So the bulk of the time, the main radio, which is the key consumer of the energy, state that radio stays asleep. The low power radio, when it uh, is notified that traffic is available to receive, it then will wake up the entire system. Okay, uh, the next slide and here, you know, we talk about the technology. We're so focused on the technology and in the vendor community on the product. There's a key important piece of deploying the technology. So once we have the product, we need to get them deployed, maintained uh, over time. And so the IEEE has been working, uh, they have a program called Blended Learning Program. And there's a course that has recently been added to that program called Building Wireless Community Networks. So this is a technician level course on Wi-Fi. It was developed both by the IEEE SA, which is the standards organization under which IEEE, all of IEEE 802 standards are developed and the Internet Society. So the design of the course is to provide the learners, the, the, the uh, people uh, attending the course with skill and knowledge so they can maintain the networks deployed, particularly in the rural areas. So the course covers wireless networking, standards, radio operation, uh, networking, troubleshooting, uh, so that people have the knowledge to support the networks that are deployed. Uh, the example is from India and where this has been deployed, the common service centers, under this, the Ministry of Electronics Information Technology and IEEE are working together to provide this training to village level entrepreneurs. And so far over 500 people have been trained. So, you know, the, again, the prior uh, slide by Professor Karandakar talked about the need to provide skills to people in the, uh, it, uh, really everywhere throughout um, the community and supporting these networks. And this is a, a very concrete example of what can be provided. And once this, when people have this knowledge, it can be leveraged and built upon to, again, provide people more skills and knowledge uh, to be able to maintain networks and also for, for personal and professional development. So that was the first part of my talk. We talked about the four standards that have been published in uh, completed very recently, 2021. The uh, learning program that's now available. The second part of the talk is that talking about a new technology that's coming to market. And this is based on 11AH 2016. Uh, this standard is different in that it's, it's um, applicable not to 2.4, 5, and 6 gigahertz, or even 60, but sub 1 gigahertz operation. So when we talk about IoT, long range application, very low cost op operation, 
this technology, again, it's new. There are new chipset vendors coming into the market. Um, it can be added fairly straightforwardly to existing chipsets. Provides long range connectivity up to one kilometer. You hear, see the, the characteristics here. Uh, low power consumption, again, on both sides. Bi-directional monitoring and control. So a lot of IoT devices, it's one thing for the device to periodically chip data up to the network. It's another for uh, the network to provide software updates or firmware updates to that device. And this technology will enable that. Some of the use cases, consumer, industrial, and agricultural, uh, a wide variety of use cases are anticipated. I encourage you to take a look at the Methods to Business website. This is one um, example of some of the applications. They have nice descriptions of applications and you know you can imagine um, additional applications there. Okay. And then new, now the final part of the talk, new technologies. Uh, these are the two in blue are the new amendments that have been added within the last year. We're looking at the making use of randomized MAC addresses seamless and enhanced data privacy. These are the areas that are currently under development and we anticipate more to continue. One of those is wireless LAN sensing uh, to look at new applications, again, across the existing supported bands. So in summary, we continue our work in 802.11 standards community to continue to enhance the standard with new uh, capabilities and uh, continue to improve the technology curve along those the uh, range and throughput and power save um, axes. And I appreciate, again, the opportunity to speak to you and thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Dorothy. Very illuminating uh, presentation and, and gives us an idea of, of the complexity under the hood, which we take for granted. Wi-Fi appears like the most common device for everybody to use, but there's so much of things happening underneath. Thank you. Thank you. I, I would now like to introduce you to our next speaker, our guest of honor, Mr. J.R. Wilson, Chairman, Wireless Broadband Alliance. Mr. J.R. Wilson is the Vice President Power Strategy and Roaming at at and Services. It is under his leadership that the WA <laughs> founded and established every June 20th to be designated as World Wi-Fi Day. So thank you for uh, being with us today, sir. He has worked passionately to make Wi-Fi uh, work uh, seamlessly, securely, and interoperable with other adjacent technologies. He's also an executive uh, committee member of the HAPS Alliance, which is focused on new technologies for high altitude communications. Mr. Wilson, the floor is yours. Thank you very much for that introduction. I really appreciate that. And it's an honor to be here. First, I just wanna confirm that everyone can see my presentation okay before I get started. Yes, yes, go ahead. Very good. So again, thank you. Look, it's, it's truly an honor especially to see that, you know, you were celebrating World Wi-Fi Day because it was about five years ago that myself and a gentleman named Reza Jafari, who is a advisor to the Wireless Broadband Alliance, longtime advisor to the GSMA, were having coffee and we were thinking about how do we really spot, put the spotlight on Wi-Fi and its significance. And that was the beginning of effectively the Wireless Broadband Alliance establishing World Wi-Fi Day. And the purpose is to help fund Wi-Fi deployments that will connect the unconnected, to offer more affordable Wi-Fi access to communities, both rural and urban, promote the success of Wi-Fi in connecting cities and communities, and then engage and recognize the role of Wi-Fi in addressing the digital divide. So. This is a very uh, big honor, and like I said, it's a, I think it's a great way to celebrate a technology that's become part of most of our lives, will really help to bridge the digital divide and connect billions and billions of people. So the purpose of my talk today is I want to chat primarily about advancements in Wi-Fi, which I know some of them have been covered. 
um, but give you a flavor of how we're thinking about it, both from the Wireless Broadband Alliance perspective, together with some things that we're working on at AT&T. So first is, uh, obviously, there's a lot of buzz around Wi-Fi 6 and 6E. What I can tell you about both of them is they are here. 6E is very quickly becoming mainstream. As we know about 6, it enables better high density performance, faster speeds, it has more efficient battery use. 6E expands on the existing Wi-Fi 6 standard by adding the six gigahertz band. Access to that new band, at least in the US, it offers an additional 1200 megahertz of spectrum. That is a significant swath of precious, beautiful six gigahertz. According to the forecast of the WFA, Wi-Fi 6 shipments will surpass 5.2 billion by 2025. You can see that there on my deck. So over 2 billion shipments by the time we get to 2025 will be 6E. As it stands today, the US, the UK, the EU, and nine other countries are enabling six gigahertz, and it's in, under consideration in approximately 12 additional countries. Of course, the industry is already talking about Wi-Fi 7. I know Dorothy covered that a bit with the 802.11be. It'll also be multi-band, multi-channel aggregation and operation and deliver higher spectrum and power efficiency better interference mitigations, higher capacity density, and higher cost efficiency. Uh, Mr. Wilson, seven, I'd like to yes. just interrupt you. Are we on the first slide? Are you moving slides because the slide is not moving? I'm sorry, I moved slides. So maybe I'm okay. having, I, the slide should say growth of Wi-Fi 6 and 6E. Okay, I, I think we're still on uh, the first slide. Um, can we try this again? Let me try stop sharing and then I will go to share screen. And then go to the second slide. Are you seeing thank you. my second yes, slide? Yes, this is good. This is good, thank you. Thank, thank you for stopping me. I appreciate that. So in, needless to say, I mean, look, Wi-Fi 7, we're already talking about it and that's not too far around the corner. Um, it'll widely be referred to as extreme high throughput as a result of the projected ability to support up to 30 gigabytes of throughput, which is roughly three times that of Wi-Fi 6. I'll go to my next slide and make sure that you can see it before I advance. Yes, it's good. Okay, very good. The Wireless Broadband Alliance is making great progress and driving innovation, including through open roaming. And I'll just step back quick and share with you, we have three simple pillars and they've been our pillars for the last decade. And that is to make Wi-Fi seamless, secure and interoperable. We work very closely with organizations like the WFA, including on things like Passpoint. Our goal again is to bridge the digital divide. I wanna talk a little bit about open roaming. Open roaming creates a framework to connect billions of devices, users, and things to millions of Wi-Fi networks on a global scale. It's a, a roaming federation service that enables an automatic and secure passpoint Wi-Fi experience at a scale that's designed to grow faster than is possible by direct agreements alone. There's three key elements to open roaming. Number one, it's a cloud federation. So it creates a federation of networks and identity providers to enable automatic Wi-Fi roaming. Cybersecurity, it enables simple, secure, and scalable Wi-Fi with secured interconnection and encryption communication. And lastly, network automation. It defines an automated roaming consortium codes framework to support policy provision on devices and networks. The simple way that I think of it is it creates a central hub that whether it's a small coffee shop or a large enterprise or an individual user, they can enable their APs to connect to many, many people and do it very freely and openly. Next slide. So bridging the digital divide 
Uh, we believe at at and and through the Wireless Broadband Alliance that there is a corporate citizen aspect of everything that we do. Something that both at and and the WBA and likely most of the people on this call are active in is bridging, bridging what we call, is commonly referred to as the homework gap. According to a recent morning, morning consult survey, more than 75% 70 of parents, teachers, et cetera, believe that the traditional classroom learning environment will rely heavily on technology after the pandemic. I know that seems very intuitive and common sense, and it probably is, but I think that's the reality. At at and we pride ourselves on offering low-cost broadband offers. We also work closely with the government on things like the emergency broadband benefit. We provide discounted wireless solutions to more than 135,000 public and private K-12 schools. And something that I'm really proud of is that we're launching 20 at and connected learning centers in 2021 in traditionally underserved neighborhoods where residents face barriers to connectivity. In those venues, we are gonna provide high-speed AT&T fiber internet and Wi-Fi to ensure the centers have the resources for devices like laptops and tablets. In addition, the centers will have access to Warner Media content, and we've also partnered closely with Khan Academy. So I'm really proud of the work that not only organizations like Broadband India Forum, Wireless Broadband Alliance, the WFA, but also the company that I work for are doing. In terms of AT&T and how we think about Wi-Fi, obviously we've got a very significant broadband business. We continue to make multi-billion dollar investments in expanding the reach of fiber. Fiber is effectively going to be the lifeblood of 5G and Wi-Fi, especially as Wi-Fi continues to move up the technology curve. We are putting Wi-Fi 6 gateways in all of our residential broadband uh, consumers' homes together with mesh-based extenders. And then we've improved the experience through a smart home manager app that gives very simple set of controls and notifications. We also use Wi-Fi extensively to add coverage and quality to our customers. So whether it's airports, we cover about 35 airports today with Wi-Fi, about 50 military bases. In fact, in New York City, where there was traditionally AT&T phone booths, which are now obsolete, they've been replaced with digital signage that also have Wi-Fi. We provide seamless, secure Wi-Fi to our customers in places like New York City and even places like Las Vegas. Again, the goal is that it be seamless and secure. We have also built our own platform that sits in between the cellular network and the Wi-Fi network so that we can smartly manage offload between those two environments. So Wi-Fi, nonetheless, um, whether it be for AT&T or otherwise, it is a critical imperative technology that's improving the quality of service and coverage for millions and millions of people. I think it has an extraordinarily bright future. Again, I'm honored to see that you're celebrating World Wi-Fi Day. I want to thank you uh, to the Broadband India Forum for hosting this and allowing me to present today. So with that, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. Very interesting, and uh, it's very interesting to know that, uh, that uh, Wi-Fi is, is important to advance to economies as well as emerging economies. Very interesting. I would now like to invite our chief guest, Dr. P.D. Vagela, Chairman TRAI, to release the white paper titled Role and Importance of Next Generation Wi-Fi Technologies in Acceleration of Digital Transformation. Authored by Dr. Rajkumar Upadhyay, Chairman BIF's New Technologies Committee, and also Executive Director of CDOT. Seema, may I please play the video to release by paper, please.
Many thanks to our chief guest Dr. P.D. Vagela, Chairman TRAI, for releasing a white paper authored by Dr. Rajkumar Upadhyay, Chairman of Broadband India Forum's New Technologies Committee and Executive Director CDOT, on the role and importance of next generation Wi-Fi technologies in acceleration of digital transformation. Highlights of the white paper will be presented by Dr. Rajkumar Upadhyay after the release of the white paper. Thank you, Dr. Vagela, for virtually releasing the white paper. I would now like to invite Dr. Rajkumar Upadhyay, Chairman BIF's New Technologies Committee and Exim Director CDOT, to present his thoughts on the white paper. Dr. Upadhyay is an ITS officer. He has earlier served in key positions in Doordarshan, All India Radio, DOT, and TRI, having worked on various issues, including infrastructure, spectrum pricing, broadband, NGN, interconnection, indigenous telecom equipment manufacturing, etc. He's a winner of several awards, including JC Bose Award by MOD, National E-Governance Award, CIO 100 Award by IDG, and Deepak C. Jain Award by IM Bangalore. Happy to have you with us, sir. Over to you. Audible? Yes, sir. And my, yes. Screen, my screen is visible? Yes, it is. Go ahead, sir. Good evening, everyone, uh, and good morning to... Uh, Ms. Dorothy Stanley. Uh, it's really a pleasure to be part of this World Wi-Fi Day. So uh, I think I will encourage uh, everyone to go through the white paper, but some of the points, given the limited time of 10 minutes, I would like to cover here. This slide is not changing. It is not changing. So can you uh, 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 escape and come back, uh, present again? We had that, yes. Hmm. Sorry about that. So would you like us to do it uh, from our end? Uh, no, let me try once more. Right. Is it correct now? Is it is it changing? Uh, it's not visible, sir. Yeah. Not yet. Yet. Once again. Yes. 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 Changing or no? Uh, so I think in full screen mode is not changing. I'll change it this way then. Right. Okay. Okay. So in right. full screen mode is not changing. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So thanks again for uh, you know inviting me for this uh, Wi-Fi day. Uh, so I I think a lot my job has been uh, eased by already the introduction of Wi-Fi 6C by Professor Garandikar and the standards by Dorothy Stanley and lot many. Uh, improvements which are happening on Wi-Fi and the use cases by Mr. J.R. Wilson. So if you go through the standard evaluation, evolution and technology adoption, uh, we see that uh, Wi-Fi has been evolving quite a bit right from 97 till late. And the best part is that it is being driven by multiple organizations like IEEE, IEEE SA, Wi-Fi Alliance, WBA, ETSI, 3GPP, all are working to make Wi-Fi better and the technology adoption. And uh, as uh, uh, Dorothy Stanley was mentioning that 802.11x, AX, which has brought in uh, Wi-Fi 6 and with the opening of six gigahertz band Wi-Fi 6E has opened up lot many applications. In fact, if you look at the speeds from which were 2 Mbps in 802.11 in 97, it has almost reached 10 Gbps in the latest 802.11 AX. And the next generation Wi-Fi standard uh, is already group is working under IEEE 802.11 BE, uh, which is going to deliver next generation Wi-Fi, and this is going to support real-time applications. So with the, currently Wi-Fi 6 is giving me around 160 megahertz of bandwidth, 
this what Wi-Fi 7 under BE will provide 320 megahertz uh, uh, of bandwidth. So if we look at the uh, what is happening globally, I think some of some part of it is already covered uh, that the global Wi-Fi hotspots are going to you know uh, four times fourfold from 169 million in 2018 to 628 million by 2023. The we, parallelly the Wi-Fi have speeds are also increasing. It is tripled from 30 Mbps in 2018 to 92 Mbps in 2023. If you look at the Wi-Fi 6 hotspots, in fact, uh, they are gaining uh, good traction as the uh, uh, previous speaker was telling that a lot many shipments have happened. As per my data, 338 million uh, Wi-Fi 60 uh, hotspots have been shipped. So the Wi-Fi 6 hotspots are going to be 13 fold by 2023, are going to be 11% of all the public Wi-Fi hotspots in uh, 2023. If you look at the APEC region, the average Wi-Fi speed is again going to be more than 3.4 growth as, uh, in from 2018 to 2023. In terms of network devices in the APEC region, we will see around 50% of the uh, devices wired or over Wi-Fi. If you look at the, I mean, uh, after all, any technology has to do something good for the society. So in terms of contribution to economy, Wi-Fi has played a big role. And there are a lot of many studies, including World Bank study, which says that 10% increase in broadband leads to more than 1% increase in GDP. If you look at the contribution of Wi-Fi technology to the global economy, it is going to be around 5 trillion by 2025, currently around 3.3 trillion. And the shipments of Wi-Fi 6 have already uh, started and uh, around 2.2 billion shipments have happened and uh, the 6E, Wi-Fi 6E, around 338 million devices have happened. I would like to mention that there was a study conducted by BIF in India and which estimated the Wi-Fi value almost 12.7 lakh crore in India and also estimated that the data rates per GB will uh, reduce to two rupees two per GB, which is quite cheap or I mean, which will be one of the lowest in the world. If we, this was talked about well by uh, Ms. Dorothy Stanley, that a lot many changes are happening, a lot many standards are there. I have not mentioned all of them, but key uh, thing is that with the launch of Wi-Fi 6 and 6E, a lot many vertical mar markets are opened, uh, industrial manufacturing, hard SD mall, residential transportation, education. The key, uh, some of the key environments are industrial IoT because of the now low latency and deterministic behavior is you know, allowing us to have some more use cases in challenging in industrial environment. Convergence of Wi-Fi and 5G, it is, you know, going to aid, uh, complement the 5G technology to reduce the overall deployment cost. Wi-Fi sensing is again going to open new business opportunities, home security, healthcare, enterprise, building automation and management segment. Similarly, the work happening on connected and autonomous driving vehicles, uh, automobile manufacturers, globally are actually investing in and finding new use cases of this new standard. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, you know, increasing the bandwidth because the bandwidth was limited in 2.4 and 5 gigahertz, uh, now 6 gigahertz momentum is happening and uh, the decision of FCC to open up a complete 1200 megahertz in 6 gigahertz band was termed as a historic event in April 2020. And post that, uh, 10 more countries, South Korea, Saudi Arabia, Brazil, Canada, Chile, Costa Rica, Peru, Honduras, Guatemala have already adopted the full six gigahertz band. UK has opened it partially. 24 countries currently are you know, considering to open the same because it is going to add lot many, lot much of bandwidth available for the licensed use. In India also, TSDSI, BIF, and ITU, APT, and WPC are already working uh, taking technical studies uh, with and having industry consultation to see that how six gigahertz band can be opened in our country. Uh, looking at the Indian scenario, if you really look, uh, the, uh, they say like data tsunami in India. If you look at the internet subscribers uh, from 238 million uh, in 2014, it has grown to 776 million in 2022 with a CSR of CAGR of 22%. If you look at the data uses, 
which was just 3.24 GB in 2014, it has increased to topping 141.11 GB in 2020. If you look at the costs, in 2014, we had per GB cost of rupees 269, which has dropped down to bare minimum of rupees 11 in 2020. Uh, although this is a positive size of story for India, but we also know that many remain unconnected or poorly connected. If you look at the public high hotspots in the country, we have just around 0.4 million hotspots against a requirement of eight to 10 million hotspots to be on par with the global average. So public Wi-Fi hotspots under PM Wani can bridge this gap. So PM Wani was a very historic scheme of government of India. Which, uh, it is trying to address the goal of NDCP 2018, that of provisioning broadband for all by 2020, and also providing 10 million public Wi-Fi hotspots by 2022. Uh, if you really look, uh, the scheme was launched very recently in December 2020. It is a new concept. It has uh, unbundled the you know different segments of the value chain. It has a public data office, which is basically the end last mile, which is providing the bandwidth. We have a public data office aggregator, which aggregates all these videos and performs the function of authorization, accounting, and security, which is very important. Then we have an app provider, which is able to show up the available WANI compliant Wi-Fi hotspots. And depending on the quality uh, provided and the service provided by a particular hotspot, the ratings will pop up the efficient WANI compliant Wi-Fi hotspots on top of it. And there is a central registry which uh, CDOT is maintaining, which actually uh, connects all of them, app providers, PDOAs, and PDOs. So this is a historic scheme. and. Currently, in a short time, we already have registered 50 PDOAs and 27 app providers. And currently, we have already populated around 50,000 access points on that. Uh, now, we, we are hand-holding the industry. I think this is going to rise exponentially once the technical complexity, whatever was available in that, people are understanding. And uh, this is going to rise exponentially. If you look at uh, Professor Karandikar uh, mentioned about this, and this we have been trying. We have been uh, using Wi-Fi as an alternate technology to extend uh, the drop bandwidth from one gram panchayat to a village, so that the, the prime minister has said that we will lay optical fiber in all six lakh villages. So till that planning and execution is happening, Wi-Fi. Uh, uh, can play a big role in extending the bandwidth using P2P and uh, point to multi-point links. And then in the village, the Wi-Fi can be used as a, a distribution network for providing uh, um, providing broadband to the villagers to a Wi-Fi hotspot. So we have already deployed this in Maharashtra and as a pilot, and soon we are likely to deploy it in other places also. In terms of standard contribution, yeah, India is very actively participating in the 802.11 thing. Some of them I'll mention where we are involved as CDOT. We are driving the effort under ISA WANI to, popular, to promote uh, WANI uh, framework so that the, because it is a unique and very, uh, you know, unique and innovative framework. So uh, it has, a, it can find application in other countries. Therefore, this particular exercise is being driven by CDOT. And then IEEE SAP2061, Frugal 5G, we are participating with along with IIT Mumbai. We have a rural uh, Wi-Fi project. Uh, this is being led by CDOT and Facebook. Another one is rural broadband service architecture. And lastly, we also are uh, working with uh, IEEE 802.11BC, wherein we are exploring, and we have actually patented this, uh, exploring how emergency alerts can be delivered through Wi-Fi network. This has already been uh, being taken up in 802.11 BC. Uh, now, way forward, the WANI is definitely, as uh, previous speakers have said, it is a very historic scheme, uh, but there are two, few problems which, uh, if they are settled quickly, uh, it will you know, uh, proliferate much faster. First is the possibility of vertical speech, because the telecom operators are today wholesale providers as well as retail providers. So therefore, there is a possibility of vertical squeeze. Uh, we feel that there is a need for fair, reasonable, and non-discriminatory pricing rules for bandwidth for PDOs 
through a regulation from the RAI. The second issue is coming up because the investment for a PDO is around rupees 8,000 with a break even period of around six to eight months. But given the investment of 8,000 and uh, uh, in, uh, you know, 1,000 million hotspot, if you target, it will require 8,000 8, million rupees. So therefore, uh, there will be lack of access to small entrepreneurs. There could be, you know, government could facilitate easy bank loans or funding from USF or some kind of loan scheme so that these small, small entrepreneurs uh, are able to, you know, make this investment and drive benefit out of this. Roaming is another very important, I think, uh, and Dr. Uh, J.R. Wilson on mentioning about open roaming. We, this open roaming is very, very important for money to succeed because currently the one scheme is limited to one particular PDOA. Uh, going forward, uh, we should have roaming across all, all of the PDOAs. Uh, lastly, because there is little confusion in the market, you know, because these access points are supposed to be one compliant. So we, we uh, recommend that, you know, TEC should certify, of course, non-mandatory so that, you know, uh, the entrepreneurs can easily buy the one compliant uh, boxes. Another thing is, uh, see, India is a huge market uh, with a lot of demand uh, for the electronic goods. Uh, we are, although we have uh, progressed well in producing the, uh, in the production, we have increased our production from $29 billion in 2014-15 to $70 billion in 2018-19. Uh, but at the same time, our trade deficit has also increased uh, on this account from $32 billion to $48 billion. Uh, given the, you know, a lot of market size and uh, the support from the government, government has launched PMI, preference to make in India, as well as PLI, productivity linked incentives. Very recently, we are hopeful that uh, this scheme will take over, take forward. But however, we will need to constantly, constantly interact with these stakeholders uh, to, you know, identify roadblocks and address them very, very quickly. Uh, as uh, has been told, uh, six gigahertz with the uh, Wi-Fi 6E and 60 gigahertz band, a variant of Wi-Fi called uh, Ygig. India has only 689 megahertz because, because we currently operate only in 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. We are not operating in 66 gigahertz as well as- uh, Dr. Rajkumar, I hate to interrupt you. I just want to tell you that we are running behind slightly. Can you please wait? My up? last slide is there. So, uh, thank you. Comment should open up the uh, spectrum. And the last slide, CDOT has been working uh, in complete Wi Fi space to help the industry and uh, will support all the uh, you know, requirements, handhold the industry. Thank you. This was my last slide. Thank you very much. Very, very illuminating and very insightful. Uh, I'm happy that uh, I, I think that you are spearheading uh, PM Vani. And I think it will take uh, build up the deficit which is there in Wi Fi. It is my honor now to invite our chief guest, Dr. P. D. Vagela, Chairman TRI, to address us. Dr. P. D. Vagela is an IS officer of the 1986 batch. He was earlier served in various important roles, including Secretary, Department of Pharmaceuticals in the Ministry of Chemicals and Fertilizers. He was also convener of the Empowered Group 3, which handled bioavailability of critical medical supplies like PP, N95, ventilators, and testing kits, now being exported globally by India. A key member of the GST Implementation Committee, he was honored by the Honorable Prime Minister of India for excellence in the public administration for his contribution to the same. Dr. Vagela, I now request you to address the audience and share your perspective, please. Thank you very much, uh, Sri R.K. Upadhyay. Um, Executive Director CDOT, uh, Mr. J. R. Wilson, Vice President at and and Chairman Wireless Broadband Alliance, Ms. Dorothy Stanley, Chair uh, 802.11 uh, uh, from IEE, Professor Abhay Kardinkar, Director IIT Kanpur, uh, of course, TV Ramchandran, President Broadband India Forum, uh, Manohar Raja, distinguished delegates, attendees, and from media, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, good evening and good morning to all of you, those who are from the, I think, Wilson and Dorothy, good morning. At the out outset, I wish to thank the organizers of Broadband India Forum for having organized this very special event on the occasion of World Wi-Fi Day and for inviting me over to deliver this keynote address. I also wish to take this opportunity to wish each and every one of us a very, very happy World Wi-Fi Day. 
internet of course is one of the most powerful socio economic engines of growth and in and india as well elsewhere in the world the wireless broad broadband is fulfilling the growth of internet services as rightly pointed out by dr rk padhyay in his excellent presentation and other eminent speakers mobile and wifi are the two technologies that have contributed immensely to the growth of internet enabled services in the country essentially these two technologies are complementary and need to work together wholeheartedly to deliver synergized benefits to the end user the celebration of world wifi day is especially significant in india this year because this is the first year of introduction of unique pm one wifi policy which is a historical step for, towards a robust broadband economy the indian broadband jogernet started in absorbably moving forward in and 2016 with the introduction of 4g lt mobile broadband at massive scale there has been no looking back since then the data deluge is continuing and has risen from mere 0.5 gigabyte per user per month in 2016 to now over 12 gigabyte per user per month and is still growing the indian appetite for data rich services appears to be insatiable and with the country now having around over 750 million broadband connections however the potential for growth is still very high with i think probably over 500 million more to be connected up especially in rural areas the powerful mobile technology of 4g lte 5g and beyond will surely deliver richer experiences and speeds to the mobile users in the terms of connectivity between the device and nearest tower the next generation 5g technology promises unheralded speeds and connectivity capabilities it represents a major step forward from current connectivity options both in cellular and wireless broadband however keeping in mind the aspects of mobile spectrum availability and network infrastructure constraints we need to have a complementary framework of wifi including public wifi to provide a powerful mechanism for downloading the data traffic to the device world wide wifi especially public wifi has emerged as one of the most successful means of enhancing broadband connectivity and proliferation among the masses as per the cisco virtual network in 2020 there is a tremendous of india also for the proliferation of public wifi hotspots the national digital communication policy 2018 has highlighted the goal of 10 million public wifi hotspots by 2022 from our current base of less than 0.5 million this shows an excellent potential uh, of growth in this field and uh, you know an attraction for the investors and the entrepreneurs as well public wifi being a low cost option to reach unserved citizens and now for the growth of economy it can revolutionize the tech world and take significantly improve wifi availability across the length and breadth of india the pm1 policy brings the aspects of smooth roaming from one wifi access point to another and thereby promotes the usage and growth of this important broadband download facilities um uh, mr upadhyay has brought out two three aspects and i have uh, you know listened to that carefully that is uh, you know roaming between the uh, pw uh, the do that we will also see uh, what we can do in fact it is a giant step towards providing ubiquity to wifi hotspots in india the creation of targeted 10 million wifi hotspots in effect 10 million small data centers would only help would not only help provide broadband for all but also create other benefits like direct and indirect employment opportunities associated with wifi hotspots tremendous opportunity for creation of lakhs of small um, local entrepreneurs and huge economy benefits resulting from broadband uses pm1 can result into a rapid scale up of internet in rural area which will be transformative given the low level of pen penetration compared to urban areas as mentioned and explained by professor tadinkar the wifi link to bharat net fiber services can be the fastest route to bridging the existing digital divide i am sure that government of india will be going for ppp mode so that the bharat net can be commercialized and the people can have the you know base benefit of the bharat net the wifi will be able to connect a new wave of internet users not just to commercial and entertainment options but also to education telehealth and agriculture extension and bring greater accountability to the government by boosting transparency and interactivity with regard to the delivery of various services pm1 system is a best low cost alternative which offers a way forward to 
connect low revenue consumers in the age of upcoming mobile technology like 5G as the network rollout involves high investment in new spectrum connectivity equipment and regulatory regular subscriber fees 5G has not commerce uh, has not commerce roll down india although the early business cases which include fixed wireless and small cities requires most available wifi connectivity 5G rollout will improve connectivity in cities where demand can outstrip today's capacity with 4G technology as the government has already uh, delicensed the spectrum in 5G edge band going forward the next generation wifi 6 reinforces the need for a robust public wifi network in the country this will help deliver extremely high capacity high speed and highly secure broadband services to the consumer by synergizing with the pm vani model mr wilson has explained the benefits of 6e uh, as and when the government of in, uh, india identifies 6 uh, gigahertz band of spectrum for wifi use Wi-Fi 6E will provide many times faster services than the current Wi-Fi standard and will offer better performance for every megahertz of spectrum. Wi-Fi 6 and 5G expand uh, opportunity for digitization across all industries. The convergence introduces new era of wireless access and enables organization to business everywhere while increasing productivity and offering the best user experience. Besides, Wi-Fi 7 is also waiting in the wings. ready to enter by 2024 this is likely to increase data download speeds up to 30 gigabytes and provide latencies of less than 1 millisecond this would truly help complement 5g technology and improve overall quality of service by taking care of significant high value data uh, uh, downloads another key aspect uh, that is intrinsic to the growth of wifi hotspots is requirement of fiber to backhaul uh, backhaul the growing wifi traffic given the fact that deployment of fiber is beset with lots of challenges wireless backhaul as mentioned um, uh, in the beginning uh, by mr ramchandran wireless backhaul could also be considered liberalization of backhaul spectrum by opening up e and b band would be of immense benefits to wifi uh, for the wifi it will help provide much needed bandwidth to the backhaul users amounts of the data try has made recommendation in this regard to the government another area of interest is the role that can be played by satellite communication mentioned by mr ramchandran in the beginning uh, by, by a much needed medium for backhauling traffic from wifi hotspots try has made suitable recommendation this regard also and um, uh, which uh, you know for uh, facilitating use of vset based networks for backhauling both cellular and wifi net uh, traffic i wish to load dr rk upadhyay and his C dot team for preparing an excellent and exhaustive white paper on technology advancements and new developments and standards in the area of Wi-Fi. The white white paper was released today on the auspicious occasion of the World Wi-Fi Day, and he has brought out impactfully the many benefits uh, to India from promoting PM Vani Fi, uh, PM Vani Wi-Fi, relating to local entrepreneurship, atmanirbhar, and indigenous manufacturing, cap uh, reduction in capex and opex um, the, the cost. Uh, enhance ability to support advanced mobile technology and many others i'm sure everyone would benefit after going through the paper and it will provide insight into what uh, and the type of regulatory and policy reforms and framework which would be required to keep pace with the uh, march of advanced uh, march of the technology in the area of wifi india needs all the technology to serve its digital ambitions and uh, and our technology neutral policy will serve as the prime catalyst for required growth to to deliver true the broadband for all and to meet the requirement of a truly inclusive uh, digital india adopting wifi to deliver affordable quality and ubiquitous broadband would be the optimal way uh, for world for all stakeholders and foremost beneficiaries would be the consumers and the general public there was a question i think it asked that uh, kindly get uh, 6 gigahertz spectrum allocation for wifi 6 on the lines of fcc as fast as possible will try and dot consider the exhaustive and in, uh, involved uh, coexistent studies and conclusions thereof based on scientific and engineering validation by indian wcc by extrapolation to indian fss and microwave links do we have to do such studies all over again and if so in what time frame i would not uh, comment on uh, what wc and the studies and all that but i can tell that in india at present we have 590 megahertz spectrum in the 5g a uh, gigahertz spectrum has been no has been delicensed recently for wifi services this can be used uh, even for the wifi 
this is presently under utilized the government has brought uh, brought pm vani scheme to increase the proliferation of wifi technology further 6 gigahertz spectrum is under consideration of the wrc 23 for imt users keeping all these facts in mind the appropriate decision shall be made by the government thank you very much uh, i conclude my speech thank you very much for giving me an opportunity thank you very much sir very comprehensive keynote delivered and uh, you are very kind enough to answer the uh, the question as well i i think that 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 uh, will uh, take us forward uh, to the last item on our agenda uh, i would now like to invite uh, mr sanjay padubidri co chair bif's wifi committee to give a word of thanks sanjay is director uh, uh, is software director npg intel corporation having started his career in 1996 he has worked in several startups medium and large companies in networking chip design and iot domains he and his team have been working closely with major wireless telecom equipment manufacturers to enable 4g and 5g base stations on intel silicon he has a masters degree in computer science from the state university of new york in stony brook over to you sanjay thank you manohar so a sincere thanks to the wonderful audience first and foremost who joined us today for this dialogue um a big thank you and a deepest gratitude to dr pd vagela thank you sir chairman trai for taking time from his uh, hectic schedule to be with us today and to share his thoughts on wifi and cellular ecosystem opportunities for india i must mention a profound sense of appreciation to dr rajkumar upadhyay executive director of cdot for his presentation and for the white paper on the important subject of role and importance of next generation wifi technologies in acceleration of digital transformation i think he has captured the evolution of wifi standards projection and trends and impact to the economy uh we cannot thank enough ms dorothy stanley chair of the ieee 80211 working group mr jay wilson chairman of the wireless broadband alliance and professor abhay karandikar for their excellent presentation on the three different and important aspects of wifi we are grateful to dr renuka rameshan and mr saurav roy choudhury for enabling this dialogue to be accessible to people with a hearing disability a sincere thanks to shri tv ramachandran for his leadership and guidance in the broadband india forum and for encouraging this much needed dialogue we would like to thank the wifi alliance and the wireless broadband alliance for supporting the world wifi day celebrations and i triple e for joining us as our knowledge partner tsdsi as the standards partner and bharat exhibitions as our events partner i also wish to express my gratitude to the entire bif secretariat for supporting us with the perfect logistic support for organizing this dialogue and of course i can't miss to thank mr manohar raja chairman of the wifi committee for his support in organizing this dialogue so thank you all for being with us this evening continue to remain safe and healthy thank you sanjay thank you sanjay thank you, thank you. so thank you everybody we now bring our proceedings to the end thank you very much again yeah. thank you manohar thank you everybody thank Bye -bye. you manohar yes. masterful masterful uh, conducting of the entire um, yes. events today i shall keep you in mind for future dialogues <laughs> <laughs>